G'day crew and welcome to another video. I'm afraid the weather has kept me off the water since the last video. Hopefully that'll change in the next week, but in the meantime I did manage to pick up a rod on special so I can make up that trolling rig that I was planning to do. So what I thought I'd do in this video is take you through the whole setup from start to finish in case that's of some interest to people. So without further ado, let's get on with it. This is the brand new rod. I got it from Anaconda and the reason I picked it up was it's not a bad rod, it is cheap. It was on a 40% reduction for club members and well I join the club everywhere I go because it costs nothing and you get good discounts for it. I wanted that another rod to set up permanently patrolling for snapper and this is it. As I say it's a cheap rod. It's a Shimano quick fire. It's a quick fire a uh, seven foot snapper rod uh, for a spinning reel, four to eight kilos. That suits me pretty good. Regular price was basically a hundred dollars and I got it for 60. So 40% discount on it. Otherwise I would have been still waiting. Now that I've got it, I've got to set it up. I had a spare reel put on it. It was on a rod that was broken. That's it there. As you can see, it has had a bit of use. It's a, another uh, Shimano Sienna reel. I've got a few of them. And it's got some line on it. Not very much. I'm going to use that as a backing line. And I reckon I can run 100, 150 metres of new line on top of that, which is probably all I need. I won't see the backing line, but that will get the spool filled up and make it easier to cast if I want to cast it. So, first thing, we'll just put this reel on here. And being a cheap rod, I've always found that the cheap rods, they come with a plastic uh, knurled nut, the plastic threads, and no locking nut to go on behind it. Obviously they're made to a price and can't put a single extra cent on it. So what I do is I put some zip ties around it as well just in case it comes loose on me. Just in case it comes loose on me, I just give me a little bit of holding power. And they're not in the way when you're using the rod. Now, I said I was going to go with 10 pound line on this because I thought the lighter line might be good for getting the lures down deeper. However, I did some research on it and I found that the Shimano grappler line in 15 or 16 pound is actually about the same um, diameter as your normal 10 pound braid. Now, I would have gone for the Shimano Osea braid but they don't come in uh, that lower weight, I think their lowest weight's about 30 pound. So I decided I'd go with the grappler just because it gives me those extra few pounds of braking strain on it and uh, it's still a very thin line so that'll, well, it's the thinness of it that's going to help it get down deep, not the weight of the line. You want a very thin line to get down deep. So there it is at 16 pound, but it's near enough 15, so I'll put three rings on it just to remind me that I got 15 pound line on it. And this is heat shrink. You can pick it up at, uh, well, I buy mine at JCar, but you can pick it up off eBay. Uh, a lot of other electrical outlets will probably have it. And I borrowed my wife's uh, hair, hair dryer just to heat it up.
trick is you don't just want ordinary heat shrink. You want the, want the heat shrink with the hot glue inside it so that when you heat it up, the hot glue melts and glues it onto the rod. That way they'll never move or come off, even if they're out in the sun a fair bit. You just slip that on there, make sure it's all nicely lined up. There it is. And now I've just got to wait for the line to arrive, which I've got coming by mail order. And I'll finish the video when that comes. In the meantime, I'll just put that aside for now. It should be here in the next couple of days, and I should have the video up for the weekend. And I'll show you all through it, setting up the lure, the leader, everything. I've got all the bits and pieces now that I need to put all this together. I've got the Shimano Grappler line there. You can see that's a 16.8 pound line. It's uh, 0.1 of a millimetre in diameter, so very, very thin line. That'll help it dive deep. Uh, 16.8 pounds is the 7.6 kilos, of course. That'll be a 0.8 PE rating. It's a very, very thin line. And normally the PE rating, like a 10 pound line, is normally rated at PE1. So this is a, a 16.8 pound line, and it's below 1 PE, which is great. And I'm matching this with this with this Shimano Oshia leader, fluorocarbon leader, 12 pound leader, and it's also very thin for what it is. I might be putting a huge long leader on this, and I'm going to put the lures straight onto it. Now I've got a selection of lures here. I've got the name ads that I've been using. I've got an atomic hards to try it because that looks like a really deep diver. Look at that bib on it. And I'm going to set this up, as I said before, I've got some backing line on there. I'm going to put this on, on top of it, uh, just to make up a full reel in case I want to cast it at any time, because a full reel is much easier to cast than a half reel. This is another very thin braid that's on there. It's, I think, a 15 pound braid, but I don't ever expect to see that. I think getting 100 odd metres of line on top of it, um, I don't expect ever to get that going out. If I do, I'll have a bimini twist joining them, and I have total faith in those knots. I've done a video on how to do them before, but I will run through it again on this video. Okay, this is uh, doing a bimini twist in this line here. Got heaps of line out, because what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put it down here when I do it, and I want it to come up over my knee, and then I've got a heap of, uh, tag end here to work with. I might grab a bit more, better to cut it off and not have enough. That's my loop there. I'm making a nice long loop so that I can get it around my foot and my knee. Just makes it a little bit easier to tie. And then what you want to do is you're going to twist this. Three, four, five, six, eight, ten. Twenty-five times should do it. And then we want to put this down on the floor under our foot. And it's a good idea to wear shoes for this because by the time you get all the pressure on it, it's going to be biting into your fingers. And this thin line, it will be almost cutting your fingers. Okay, so what we can do now is we separate out our tag end and we start pulling this down towards our knee to tighten that loop. And then when we get down here and it's really tight, we start bringing that line down so that the twisting goes over top of the other one. So you've got a double, a double twist there. You've got the twist we put in and then as you pulled it tight, you fed this leader down so it twisted back down to the bottom of that. Now grab it in your hand so it doesn't come undone. And we do a half hitch over one side Pull that down really tight. Okay, that's locked the knot in now. That knot's not going anywhere. Oh. Just straighten it out a bit. Now take that tag end and do a half hitch over the other side of the knot. And tighten that down. And still with the tag end, do a half hitch over both sides of the leaf.
Now if you want to, you could finish it off with uh, another half dozen or so half hitches. But what I like to do is to bring a loop around like this and twist the line around the double. Twist the tag end around that double. A lot of tag end here to work with makes it a little bit harder. Three. Four. D7 because it's a really thin braid. The thicker it is, the fewer you need to worry about doing. Bring that down here, lay your tag end back along the main line, and then grab your loose end here, the thin line, and start unleaping it. One, two, three, four. Six, seven. Now what that's done is pull all those loops back along this tag end and then gently start to tighten that. Give it a little bit of lubrication. Just spit on it or put it in your mouth. And then pull up on it, making sure it doesn't bunch up. And when you're there, pull it down really tight. Okay, and that's your bimini twist done. Got a nice long double on there to join the lines. I'll show you how to do that later. I do another bimini twist in the other end, which I won't bother putting on camera. It's just the same as this one. And I'll trim that tag end off and leave oh, maybe a quarter of an inch of tag. So about five millimeters of tag end sticking out of there. And notice how small that knot comes up. Because of all the pressure we had on it and the thin line, that is such a tiny knot. There's no way that's going to slip. So there you are, let's see Bimini twist. I'll do the other one, get the line on the rod and then come back to the video. This is the critical part of getting your Bimini twist to join up right. This is the main line and I've got it stretched out here to make sure I get roughly the centre of the bottom of the loop down here. So that's where I'm going to work, just there. Now what we do is we take our line we're joining we pass that through there like so and we bring it back around over that so we've got one loop done there trying to see now how I've... yeah there we go uh, yeah okay so now we take this we pass it back through there again and back up through this loop always in the same direction make sure i've got know which direction I'm going in through there again you can do it as many times as you think necessary but I generally find three or four is enough and I think that will do it so what we want to do now is make sure that both of these are even see this this side's a little bit looser than that side so what we're going to do is try and pull that through a little bit so that we get without tightening the knot so that we get that nice and even so something like that looks good and then we want to do the same with the other end so that we're not tightening the knot and make sure that's nice and even and once we're like that we can gently ease that with a bit of lubrication until it pulls up nice and tight so you can see that that there both of the sides of that loop are exactly the same length and that's where the strength comes in and that is a hundred percent strength join in the lines i can count on presumably 15 pounds on the main side of it and 16.8 pounds on the other side the knot itself will be a hundred percent and normally i set my drags at about 25 percent to 30 percent of the line weight so i'll be setting my drags about five pounds for this setup that'll make sure that none of the knots are getting over strained uh, I should be able to wind down a little bit more if I have to. The other thing I'll just mention is I bought multicoloured braid. And that is so that I can tell how far I'm letting the line out when I'm trolling. I find it pretty hard to estimate the distance when I've got single colour braid. So for that reason I like to use the multicoloured braid. It changes colour every 10 metres so I've just got to count it out. So I'll wind that on the rod and then we'll come back and put the leader on and finish it all up. 
I'm going to tie the leader on with an FG knot. Now, I'll show you in another video how to do this. So, I'm just going to start it off and here and then I'll leave you to look at the other video if you really want to know how to do it and I'll show you the finished product. So, I just start with getting a, a decent length of doubled up line and then I take that double that line I wrap it around my little finger don't wrap it too tight because it'll cut your circulation off and you'll end up with your little finger being all purple don't get it hooked up in your buttons see my fingers already start to go a bit red and I haven't wrapped that very tight at all so that's the idea you want to form that triangle there and you're working on this leg of the triangle this is the quickest way I know and the easiest way I know to do an FG knot get your leader put it through there bring it round and then bring the other side round and tighten them down underneath your fingers and then just keep doing that so there's another video up showing you the complete uh, completely how to do that I'll try and remember to put a link up in the video description if you want to have a look at that but we'll turn this off for now because I don't want to make this video too long and I'll just finish the FG knot and show you what it looks like when it's finished all right, I've got the FG knot made here. I had to use some uh, Pandera leader. So I'm back to the 20 pound leader. It's, I think it's just a little bit thicker than the uh, Asia leader. I can't quite see a diameter on it. So I think it's just a shade thicker than the Asia leader. It's 20 pound, so it's bound to be thicker than 12 pound. But at least it's not breaking. Uh, I'm pretty sure I wasn't putting 12 pounds of strain on that, so the knot must have been pinching the line um, as it pinched it down made it thinner it became more uh, easier to break so anyway I've got to rethink how I'm using that fluorocarbon in the meantime I've got 20 pounds on this there's my nice FG knot I've left about three millimeters of tag end out on the um, Pandera leader and the um, braid and what I'm going to do is protect the knot with my fingers so that it doesn't burn the knot at all. And I'm going to melt the ends of these so that they're mushroomed over. So there's no way that that knot's going to come off the end of that mushroom unless it breaks the mushroom off the end of the line. So that's just another way of making sure your line doesn't slip. So I don't know if you'll see it on the video, but there's a nice little mushroom on the end of that line there. And uh, that'll stop the FG knot if it's even thinks about slipping over the line, that'll stop it. So now I'll just make some leader up and uh, put my lures on. I had the three lures that I showed you before to pick from and I asked my wife to pick the colour that the fish are going to like the best and she picked this one. This is the Nomad DTX Minnow in 85mm and Gold Buster colour. So let's hope they do like it. Now I've got the loop knot made in the leader. I only got about two meters of leader on this. I wanted to keep it as short as uh, possible while still leaving enough there in case I got to retie it. And two meters of leader at 20 pounds shouldn't be too bad I'm hoping. And I've got to get this nice and thin. So I've got to poke it through that little ring there. The trouble is to get that ring in a position where I can poke it through I've got to work upside down with it. Right, that's got it. And this is why I got the really big loop on it. I can go all the way around the lure and just pull it up like that. And there you have the lures tied on there, ready to go. It's got the rubber bands on it holding the hooks together. It comes from the shop, I'm gonna leave them on. I'll cut them when I get out on the water and ready to put the lure in the water. Other than that, it's a nice shape. It's supposed to be a deep diver. It's supposed to go down to um, six meters, I think it said. So that should be a good rig. I've done almost everything that uh, George Mole suggested for trolling for snapper. I've got the pretty much the lure he suggested. I've got the really light line, even though he was saying 10 pounds better, I've got uh, the 16 pound, but it's thinner than 10 pound, normal 10 pound line. So it should be at least as good. My lead is a bit heavier, but there's only two meters of it. Also notice that for the second time in my life, I haven't put a swivel on the line. George suggested no swivel. So I've just joined it with the FG knot. And I've actually been reading up on that a bit on uh, the internet. And tests have shown that with a braided line, the braid is that flexible that the swivel doesn't actually swivel. 
the braid will twist and untwist before the swivel will actually turn. So swivel for mono lines, but for a braided line apparently they're not really needed and it'll give you a lighter rig to uh, fish with. Although I think for bait fishing I'd still be inclined to have the swivel on there uh, just because it gives that line a tiny little bit of extra weight to pull the line down and the bait will still float down looking pretty natural. Anyway, that's it for the video. That's a complete rod setup and next week's video hopefully we'll be out on the water trialing it and seeing how it goes. So I look forward to doing that. I hope you look forward to seeing it. Until then, good fishing. And that wraps it up. The rod's ready for use and hopefully I'll get an opportunity to use it within the next week and have a video of that up for next weekend. Of course it remains to be seen if the fish cooperate. Fingers crossed that they do. In any event, I hope you get out and have a fish one way or another and get a video up for next week on that, whatever it is. So until then, good fishing.